Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on running multiple power system scenarios on multiple cores. My name is Graham Dudgeon and I am an industry manager at MathWorks, serving the utilities and energy industry. In order to extract the most value from your power system studies, a range of computational capabilities are required. In this webinar, we focus on running multiple simulation scenarios and how we can use multiple cores to run those scenarios in a time-efficient way. For example, if we have eight scenarios and two cores, then four scenarios will be run on core one and four scenarios on core two. The more cores you have, the better. The example we will be looking at is the IEEE 123 node test feeder. I would like to acknowledge Bill Kersting's original citation. For more information on this network, you can follow the URLs shown. We are now in the MATLAB environment. The first thing we are going to do is open the IEEE 123 node model. This model was created automatically from a MATLAB script. For more information on model creation, you can watch the webinar on building network models automatically. We will use Rapid Accelerator mode to run this model on multiple cores. Select Rapid Accelerator and then save the model as a new name. We'll append the file name by adding underscore RA for Rapid Accelerator. Press save. When we run multiple scenarios, it makes sense to run the model under a new directory in order to contain the data files that are generated. I'll make a new directory called RA1. Add this directory to the path by right-clicking on the directory and selecting Add to Path and Selected Folders. And then navigate to the directory by double-clicking. We'll now take a look at some important aspects of the model for running multiple scenarios. I'm going to zoom in to the inputs and the outputs. The voltage and current measurements are being saved to map files using two file blocks. This is essential when you are saving large amounts of data from a simulation. Two file blocks incrementally save simulation data to file and therefore limit the amount of RAM being used. We'll see in a few minutes that I generated approximately 70 gigabytes of simulation data running 1000 scenarios. Because I used two file blocks, I had no issues with RAM maxing out. The only limitation on data saving when you use two file blocks is the amount of space you have on your hard drive. We'll now step through the process for running the scenarios on multiple cores. I created a script that will do this. A script called run par4. Step one is to create a rapid accelerator target using the command on line nine. I'm going to run section and advance. As it's building the target, I should also say that you should make sure that you have no data saving mechanisms other than to file blocks in your model. You should also not include scopes as they will slow the simulations down in rapid accelerator mode. The compilation will take a few more seconds. It's now building the target and it's done. Step two is to create your scenarios. For the purpose of this example, I created 1,000 scenarios by using random number generation to modify each load. The scenarios are contained within a data structure called imp sets. See there are 1,000 scenarios. Each one has 21 timestamps and 152 inputs. Step 3 is to create data structures to tell Rapid Accelerator what to do for each iteration. So I'll just run and advance this. We'll now take a look at the setup for the first iteration. So here we tell Rapid Accelerator that we are feeding in input data called external input, that we don't want the up-to-date check to happen so that the model will not rebuild during the simulations. The simulation stop time is 0.1 of a second, and that we're going to change the file name associated with the two file blocks by appending the scenario number to the file name. So you can see underscore one here, if we look at the second scenario, you see underscore two. So you see that the to file suffix has changed appropriately. Step four is to run the scenarios using par4, the parallel for loop. In this case, I'm limiting the scenarios to eight 
and I have two cores on my machine. I'll run this now by selecting Run Section. As the simulation runs, we'll see the files being created in the current folder. So there we see the voltage and current measurements for scenarios 3 and 6. So Parfor has decided to do scenarios 3 and 6 first. We see the tap measurements as well that are also being recorded. And as it runs through the par for loop, we'll see the additional scenarios being added. Scenarios 2 and 5 have now been added, and so on as this progresses. So you can see it doesn't do the parallelization sequentially. Par 4 will decide which scenarios to do on each core. We're through six of the scenarios now. Scenarios 7 and 8 to go. So it took 111 seconds, approximately, to, to run those eight scenarios. So we'll take a quick look at the data. We're going to take a look at voltages from scenarios 1 and 5. So I can go down to the, the vMesh, which is the voltage, double-click to load that file up. We'll plot the voltage at node 1. So there you can see the three voltages, the three phases, and how the, the loads are changing and affecting the voltage measurements. We'll also look at scenario 5. First thing I'll do is load scenario 5 up and we'll look at the same node but for scenario 5 and we'll bring the two figures side by side. You can see the differences in the scenarios by comparing these two figures. I previously ran 1000 scenarios which generated approximately 7 gigabytes of data which you can see here in the directory tmpra we go into that directory, then if I just scroll down, then you can see 1,000 files were generated for current, 1,000 for voltage, and also 1,000 for each of the, the tap measurements as well. For more information on the analysis and reporting of large quantities of saved data, you can watch the webinar on working with simulation data. In summary, we have seen how multiple simulation scenarios can be run on multiple cores, which decreases the time taken to run the scenarios. When running large numbers of scenarios and or running extended simulations with hundreds or thousands of outputs, it is highly recommended that you use two file blocks. This saves the generated data incrementally to your hard drive and therefore minimizes the use of RAM. Thank you for listening.